outside of the rain and where it's raining, like in Atlanta, we've fallen back to 88. We've got much more rain in the forecast for part of the work week. I'll break down that timing coming up. We're getting our first look tonight at the man police say caused a scare at a back to school event. Police say Santonio Foster opened fire at a Northeast Atlanta park. A Channel 2 viewer gave us video that shows people running after shots were fired. Come on, Tony. Atlanta rapper 21 Savage attended last night's event. New tonight at 6, Channel 2's Nefertiti Jacquez is live in DeKalb County where he hosted an event today. Well, Lori, that event is wrapping up here behind me. You can still see some parents and kids. Now, this is the third year in a row that 21 Savage has hosted this back-to-school event here in Decatur, where he was born and raised. Now, the back-to-school event is something that the rapper says he does to give back to his community. Hundreds of parents from across the metro area came out to get a glimpse of him and thank him for what he's done to help them and their kids. The star had a number of tables and booths set up so children could get backpacks, school supplies, everything from notepads to pens, sneakers, and even haircuts. Now, since the line was long, he even provided families with food and water because it's extremely hot out here. But when we talked to 21 Savage about this event, he was happy about what was happening here because it was his. But we also asked him about that shooting that took place yesterday around 8 o'clock in the evening at Cone Park where shots rang out and again that suspect arrested. Now he was clear in saying that that wasn't his event and his people had nothing to do with that shooting. In fact, he was only there to support another back to school event taking place in the area because he's an Atlanta native, native uh, area event that was for children. Uh, it ain't right. People need to think about like their actions. Like we coming together to push positivity, to get all the negative stuff away. Like we trying to show the kids that grown people that can come together and do something positive. As we come back out live again, this event is wrapping up. Uh, it's been going on now for about three and a half hours. 21 Savage now with his people about to head out. And then parents here again just trying to get a glimpse of him. He says, you know, he's really disappointed about what happened yesterday or that his name was even attached to that event. Again, he was only there to support it. And, of course, he wants to be here and support his community here from Decatur because, again, this is where he was born and raised. That is the very latest from Decatur. Now for TD Jacquez, Channel 2 Action News. All right, now thank you. More details now about 21 Savage. In April, the rapper paid for the funeral of a toddler who died in a drive-by shooting in DeKalb County. Police charged a 15-year-old in connection to that murder. Just into Channel 2 Action News, dramatic body camera video shows the moment Atlanta police officers saved a man from a burning car. Police say the driver crashed into a metal pole on Georgia 400 near Lennox Road. It was early this morning. Witnesses rescued several people from that car, but one passenger was unconscious. We're working to learn more about the rescue and speak with officers who got that man to safety. We'll bring you the very latest on Channel 2 Action News Nightbeat at 11. Developing this evening, deputies rescued 11 children in that compound raid. Say it's clear now the group was trying to live off the grid. They raided the compound in Taos, New Mexico on Friday. They say they had information that a three-year-old boy abducted from Clayton County last year may be there. Deputies did not find that boy. Instead, they did find his father, Siraj Wahaj, four other adults, and 11 children. Deputies describing the conditions there as deplorable. Neighbors were surprised by the news. These people must be really sick to do something like that to these kids. It scares me um, because... It, you know, the safety of my own children who are teenagers, you know, you never know what can happen at any given point. Deputies say they're still looking for that three year old boy. Child welfare officials are now caring for the other 11 children. Police are looking for the person who shot three people outside a restaurant in DeKalb County. One person died. Police told us they responded to calls about a fight outside Acapulco Tropical on Buford Highway in Brookhaven around 2 this morning. Officers heard gunshots when they arrived. They say two of the three victims are expected to be okay. Police say a 19-year-old accused of shooting and killing a teenage mother 
of his child had a court protective order against him. They say that he also shot himself and is now in the hospital. That shooting happened around 9 this morning on Briarcrest Court in Riverdale. Investigators say the man went to the home and was talking to the 17-year-old girl when family members caring for the baby heard gunshots and found both teens on the floor. A neighbor heard the commotion. It's an unfortunate situation. Unfortunate, you know, I hope to work out. Really don't use to have this type of problem around here. Yeah, police say Fulton County processed the protective order in February. The couple's eight-month-old baby is now with family. As Fulton County students prepare to go back to class, a new walkway is now open. Johns Creek city leaders held a ribbon cutting Friday morning along Parsons Road. They say the new sidewalk is along an elementary school walking route and will improve overall safety in that area. A local barber shop helping students go back to class in style. The Him and Her Grooming Lounge in Sandy Springs gave out free haircuts and school supplies today. Owner Eric Mackins telling us he was inspired by another back to school event and wanted to give back to his community as well. Students in a dozen school districts head back to school tomorrow. Here's a map of the schools that include Gwinnett, Fulton, DeKalb, and Clayton counties. That's where district officials cut the ribbon on the new East Clayton Elementary School in Ellenwood on Tuesday. Our back to school live Team 2 coverage starts at 4 30 tomorrow morning. Severe Weather Team 2 will tell you how your children should be dressed for the bus stop, and Triple Team Traffic will guide you through all that extra traffic out on the roads. Floyd County Police are mourning the loss of a beloved canine officer. We got these photos from the department's Facebook page. Since 2011, canine officer Gibbs assisted in the seizure of more than $250,000 worth of drugs. Cloud to ground lightning with this one thunderstorm near East Atlanta. Now a few showers approaching Stone Mountain. I'll have your hour by hour forecast through this evening and your back to school weather for the morning coming up. Photos show a car crashed into the side of a local home. The reason police say the driver gave them when they asked what happened. Fulton County homeowners will not have to pay property taxes just yet. The ruling that put them on hold for now. Closed captioning. Breaking news. An overturned car has traffic slowed on I-75 southbound in Midtown Atlanta. This is a live look near the Brookwood split. Plenty of traffic backed up there. The crash has the two right lanes blocked right now. Police do expect to clear it within the next 15 minutes. Property tax collections in Fulton County are on hold again. A ruling late Friday says the county would not be able to collect until a judge gives the okay because there have just been too many appeals. This year, many Fulton County residents' home values more than doubled. Nearly 40,000 people appealed those assessments. New at 6, a driver is expected to be okay after crashing into a Clark County home. Firefighters shared these pictures from this morning's crash on College Station Road in Athens. They say the driver told them he swerved to avoid several deer that were in the road. That's when he lost control and slammed into that house. Looking south towards some rain in parts of the South Metro, and I'm tracking that on Storm Tracker 2 HD, your hour by hour forecast for this evening. And a look at when more widespread rain returns this week, all coming up next. Friends are desperate to find the shooter who killed their friend on I 20. It's hard to understand why anyone would do this. Police say a woman the victim went on a date with earlier that night could hold clues about his death. Salami. We need your help tracking down a woman who went on a date with this man just hours before someone killed him on I-20. We talked to heartbroken friends trying to understand why someone would want to harm the 33-year-old man. Every scenario can run through your head right now. Uh, you know, pe people who are the detectives and everything, they're doing their jobs, and, and all we can do is hope that, you know, we get an answer. On Friday, police found Rodrigo Castillo in the driver's seat of a car stopped on the MLK exit of I-20 in southwest Atlanta. They say before he was the murder, he was with a woman he met on a dating app. Detectives do not believe she was involved in his death, but say she could help with their investigation. Severe Weather Team 2 is tracking storms in the metro. Let's get straight to meteorologist Brad Nitz with where those are now. Brad? Yeah, so isolated storms, not a lot of coverage of the rain, but where it's falling, boy, it's really coming down. And some of it in parts of the most 
populated areas in Metro Atlanta. So not covering a lot of spots, but it's impacting a lot of people. So you see here on Storm Tracker 2 HD, coverage pretty limited. Let's come into the metro area and put this into motion, and you can see just a slow drift to the east. So where the rain is falling, like this thunderstorm now over East Atlanta and Kirkwood, it's barely moving. So that's going to allow the real heavy rain to rain in one spot for a while. That could lead to some brief uh, ponding on the road. Certainly we expect to see that there right along I-20 just south of Decatur up towards Stone Mountain. A few showers. I've been watching a little bit of rain in and around Hartsfield Jackson. That's knocked the temperature down into the upper 80s. It's been into the low 70s and across Clayton County down towards Jonesboro. Have some heavier showers. Into Upson County, got an area of rain right over Thomaston now into the south it was slide up to the North Georgia Mountains, and you can see diminishing rain over Blue Ridge or west of Blue Ridge in western Fannin County. And temperatures with some clouds and showers in the area, the North Georgia Mountains into the 70s, knocked back down from 92 for a high in Atlanta to 88 with rain near the airport, but still 93 in LaGrange. Here's a live look from the top of Stone Mountain, and you could see a couple of isolated showers that I showed you on radar there, and then one downpour. Look at that, really coming down there. Temperatures 88 in Atlanta with a heat index still at 92, which was our actual high temperature this afternoon. It's a bit muggy and an east southeast wind at seven miles an hour. High pressure has been dominating our weather through the weekend. It's centered just to the north, but it's left us fairly dry. It certainly got hot yesterday and again today into the low 90s. As we head through the next couple of hours, isolated shower and thunderstorm coverage will continue even a little bit past sunset. So by 11 o'clock this evening, a few lingering isolated showers mainly south and southeast of Atlanta and then overnight and into the morning hours Monday morning 7 a.m. it's back to school for a lot of kids including across Fulton County weather's not going to be a problem we will be mostly sunny we will be very warm to start the day temperatures generally in the low to mid 70s mid 70s inside the perimeter tomorrow morning from there we're going to heat up pretty quickly partly cloudy into the afternoon and like today just isolated coverage of showers and storms but you happen to be in the path of one of these it's going to really come down but this is four o'clock tomorrow afternoon into the low 90s with that isolated coverage of showers and storms continuing into the evening this is a look at eight o'clock so morning lows 74 in atlanta low 70s in west georgia highs tomorrow up into the low 90s everywhere but the mountains and even there you make it up to 86 in blairsville as we head through the work week i'm going to be tracking slightly uh, slight increasing chances of rain over the next several days so by midweek cold front approaching and then it drops down into our area by Thursday so shower and thunderstorm activity expected to become much more widespread for the second half of the work week in particular on Thursday you see here in your five-day forecast morning lows warm in the mid 70s highs in the low 90s the next couple of days with only isolated showers and storms your rain chance 30 percent Monday and Tuesday up to 40 percent Wednesday and then Thursday has the best chance of showers and storms 88 and a 60% chance of rain mid 80s on Friday. And with your weekend always in view, next weekend, looking for some scattered afternoon storms and highs in the mid 80s both days. Wells Fargo says a computer glitch caused hundreds of customers to lose their homes. Now, the company is trying to make up for that mistake. Channel 2 Action News, sponsored by.